the Pythagorean theorem and Pythagorean triple. This is 5.7a. We're up to 13 previous videos for chapter 5 about properties and attributes of triangles. And they're in the geometry playlist if you've missed any of them. The Pythagorean theorem is probably the most famous mathematical relationship. And the theorem states that in a right triangle, and we've got a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So here we've got a length of 3 and a length of 4. We don't know what the hypotenuse is. We substitute them in, so we've got 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. We remove this little 2 exponent by putting a radical on the other side of the equal sign. So we have the square root of 9 plus 16 equals c, which means the square root of 25 equals c, which means the length of the hypotenuse c is 5. There's many different proofs of the Pythagorean theorem, and this one uses area and algebra. So we're given a right triangle with leg lengths a, b, and the hypotenuse of length c. We need to prove a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. And take a look at this drawing. You might see a yellow square with a white square inside, but you can also look at this as four yellow triangles with their hypotenuses forming the square inside. Okay. So we arrange four copies of the yellow triangles, or triangles, as we did here, and the sides of these triangles, the sides A and B, form the outer square, and all the hypotenuse C form the inner square. See that? If you remember, the area of a square is side squared, S squared. We do side times side, and the area of the outer square for this is a plus b squared because we need to do side times side. So we need to do a plus b times a plus b. That's a plus b squared. And the area of the inner square is this side times this side, so it's c times c. That's c squared. And the area of each separate yellow triangle is half a b because the area of a triangle is half base height. So if we look at a as the base and b as the height, it's half base height, half a b. And the area of the outer square equals the area of the four yellow triangles plus the area of this white inner triangle, inner, inner square, okay? And the area of the outer square, we already determined that it's a plus b squared, and that's going to equal the area of the four yellow triangles. Well, if each one is half a b, then four of them is four times half a b. And we add the area of the white inner square, that's c squared, so we've substituted all the areas in, we've got our equation. This a plus b squared, we foil it. Remember, first, outer, inner, last, and we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and it's going to equal 4 times half ab, which is 2ab. We bring down our c squared, and we can simplify this by subtracting 2ab from each side of the equation, and it eliminates them, and we get a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we've proved the Pythagorean theorem with area and algebra. Here's using the Pythagorean theorem. We can find the value of x and give the answer in the simplest radical form. Now, if you don't know how to do the simplest radical form or you've forgotten it from Algebra 1, if you just need a good reminder, you can watch the previous video from this one, 5.6b, because we went over that a little bit, or you could watch the link to the Algebra 1, Chapter 11, where it talks all about learning about radicals, okay? So, we've got our Pythagorean theorem. We substitute in the values. For a, it's 6. For b, it's a 4. We've got 6 squared, which is 36, 4 squared, which is 16, and it's going to equal x squared. We add these two guys together, we get 52 equals x squared. We can take this little 2 exponent off by putting a radical around this side, and we get the square root of 52 equals x. Now, 4 times 13 is equal to 52. This 4 can be written as a 2 squared, and we can reduce the index of the, radica the radical and exponent with 2, and we get 2 square root of 13. And then look at this one. Our a is a 5, our b is an x minus 1, and our c is an x. So when we substitute them in, we get 5 squared plus x minus 1 squared equals x squared. 5 squared is 25. We foil the x minus 1 squared and get x squared minus 2x plus 1, and that's going to equal the x squared. We can combine this 25 with that 1 and get 26 plus x squared minus 2x equals x squared. We can subtract this x squared from each side of the equal sign and set it to equal 0. Then 
we'll eliminate them and have 26 minus 2x equals 0. We can add 2x to both sides of the equation, and we'll get 26 equals 2x. We can divide both sides by this 2 coefficient, and we know that 13 equals x, so our hypotenuse is a 13. And take a look at this picture. There's a baseball hat in the tree, and there's a ladder up against the tree, so the wind blew Bob's hat into a tree, and he uses a ladder to get it back. And to prevent a ladder from shifting, safety experts recommend that the ratio of A to B should be 4 to 1. So this A to B should be 4 to 1. So how far from the base of the tree should he place the foot of a 10-foot ladder? We need to round it to the nearest inch. So we're going to let the distance in feet from the foot of the ladder to the base of the tree. Instead of B, we're going to use X. Then 4X is the distance in feet from the top of the ladder to the base of the tree. That's our A. Because remember, the ratio is 4 to 1. So now we got 4X and X, okay? So here's our Pythagorean theorem. We substitute our values in. Our A is 4X. We have 4X squared plus X squared equals 10 squared, because the ladder is 10 feet long. That's our hypotenuse. It's a 10. 10 times 10 is 100, right? Our 4x squared is going to be 4x times 4x. That's 16x squared plus, we drop down this x squared. We can combine like terms. We have a 16x squared plus 1x squared. That gives us 17x squared, and it's going to equal 100. We divide both sides by the 17 coefficient, and we get x squared is equal to 100 over 17. We can take this little 2 away from the x, this exponent, by putting a radical around the other side. And we find the positive square root and round it to the nearest inch. And we get x is approximately 2 feet 5 inches. You might get 2 feet 4 inches, okay? But it's approximate. A set of three non-zero whole numbers, a, b, and c, that fit the rule a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's called the Pythagorean triple. And in this rectangle are some primitive Pythagorean triples. There's an infinite amount of primitive Pythagorean triples. So 3, 4, 5 is a real famous one. We did that at the beginning of the video. When a triangle's sides are a Pythagorean triple, it's a right-angled triangle. And each positive integer of a Pythagorean triple is a factor of a perfect square. So for the 3, 4, 5, we can do 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. We get a 9 plus a 16 equals a 25. And that fits. For this one, we would do a 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. That would be 25 plus 144 equals 169, and that fits. And Pythagorean triple will always consist of all even numbers, or it might have 2 odd and 1 even. So here we have 2 odd and 1 even, 2 odd, 1 even, 2 odd, 1 even, and 2 odd, 1 even. Or, like I said, they could be all even. And look at this one. Do the values 3 tenths, 4 tenths, and 5 tenths satisfy the Pythag Pythagorean triple? It's got a 3, 4, 5. Well, when we do 0 0.3 times 0 0.3, we get 0 0.9. 0 0.4 times 0.4 is 0.16. And 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. But when we add them up, 0.9 plus 0.16 is, is 1.06. So no, it didn't work. It doesn't equal 0.25. Take a look at this. We've got our triple, 3, 4, 5. They're squared as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. When we multiply each of the terms by a 2, we get a 9 times 2 is 18, a 16 times 2 is a 32, and a 25 times 2 is a 50. 18 plus 32 is equal to 50. And if we multiply each term by a 3, we get a 27 plus 48 equals 75, and that's true. So when we multiply them by 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., we make them non-primitive. See? So that's the difference between primitive and non-primitive. Here's identifying Pythagorean triples. We can find the missing side length and tell if the side lengths form a triple. We've got A is a 12 and our hypotenuse is a 15, but we don't know what B is. So we've got 12 squared plus b squared equals 15 squared when we substitute the values. 12 squared is 144 plus the b squared equals 15 squared is 225. We can eliminate this 144 by subtracting it from both sides and we end up with b squared equals 81. We can take the two, little two exponent off and put a radical sign around the other side of the equal sign and we get b equals 
the square root of 81, so b equals 9. And the side lengths are non-zero positive integers that satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so they form a Pythagorean triple. So 9, 12, and 15 would be Pythagorean triple. And take a look at this one. Our a is a 9, our b is a 15, but we don't have our hypotenuse. We substitute the values in. We have 9 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. Well, this is an 81. This is a 225, and it equals c squared. When we add these two together, we get 306. We can take this little two exponent off by putting a radical sign around this side and find the positive square root and simplify. 306 is equal to the square root of 3 squared times 34. And remember, the root of a product is equal to the product of the roots of each factor. So we've got the square root of 3 squared times the square root of 34. And we can reduce the index of the radical and exponent with a 2. So we take off this little exponent and the square root sign, and we get 3 square root of 34. Now, the side lengths don't form a triple because 3 square root of 34 is not a whole number. So it didn't work. This theorem is named for the Greek mathematician Pythagoras and lived in the 6th century. I think he was born around 569 or so, but he wasn't the first to use it. Most believe he was the first to prove it, but he wasn't the first to use it. The Babylonians, Egyptians, and Chinese already knew of this mathematical relationship. Now, if you're really confused about the Pythagorean theorem after this, I have a whole chapter of grade 8 math that talks about this, and it might be in an easier level. And for those of you who are interested, did you know that the Greek people put knots on a rope that were equally distant from each other and used it for the Pythagorean theorem? That's 12.2c. So our next lesson is a hands-on proof of this Pythagorean theorem. We're going to fold some paper, and I'll show you. And then that's 5.7b. Then we're going to do the converse of it. That's 5.7c. And then we're going to do the Pythagorean inequalities theorem. That's 5.7d. And this video is already over 12 minutes long. So these are all part of 5.7, because we're in 5.7a now. If I had done all of these in one video, it would have been almost an hour long. And for most of my subscribers, you guys know I have uh, nerve damage in my hands, so it's hard to hold a camera longer than 10 minutes, let alone an hour. So, and I wouldn't want to do that to your brain anyway. So make sure you watch the subsequent videos because they're still part of this lesson, all right? And if you're in the geometry playlist, they're all in order for you. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. Bye.